Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Generation Y with me, Mawlana Khalil and Mawlana Raihan. I did say it right this time. Before we take any calls or discuss anything f- further, we got a few emails. It says, Assalamualaikum, I love your show. I, th- I think it's really helpful for me coming on to my teens. Please, could you make the work for me and my family? We are going to go and do Umrah in April holidays and we would like you to pray for that everything goes well and that our Umrah gets accepted inshallah uh, from Hafsa Khan, 10 years old from Bedford. Mawana. Mashallah. Brilliant. We'll do inshallah another one. Dear Mawlana Khalil, I wanted to ask why do Muslim teenagers celebrate Valentine's Day even though they know it's haram and against Islam? May Allah reward you and Mawlana Rehan for doing this Be beneficial show. Ameen from Nida Karim Coventry. And the last one, Assalamu Alaikum, Imam Khalil, I am currently watching this show and it's really inspiring. Alhamdulillah, you're doing a good job. It's educating the youth as they need to be aware of these issues. If possible, could you do a topic about birthdays and explain if we should be celebrating them or not? And are there any hadiths to back this up? Jazakallah from Tanzila from Slau. Great show, great thing about this. Apart from one... Um, who was 10 years old, the rest were teenagers. Yes, yes. Right, which, is, which is encouraging, alhamdulillah. Um, we, on the birthday, we were, uh, we were actually thinking of touching that. It's, mm-hmm. it's very similar with, with the Valentine things. Again, many, many years ago, no many, not many people celebrated birthdays. But again, it's become a common thing now. Mm-hmm. Um, again, uh, try to understand there's something which Islam doesn't teach us, right? And it's got no mention to it. That is not Islamic. And uh, celebrating your birthday is not exactly Islamic. Um, I mean, what is there to celebrate? I think the time of celebration is when we know uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to back it up with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says, dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. That this dunya, this world is a prison for us and it's a paradise for those people who don't believe in Allah. In, in this dunya, in this world, we have our boundaries and what, thing, what we can do, what we can't do. It's like a prison. In prison, you're not free to do what you want. Uh, but Allah Ta'ala says, then, but in the hereafter, you've got unlimited happiness and you've got unlimited joy. <coughs> Sorry. And you've got unlimited <coughs> celebrations. So in this world, we have to just control ourselves, inshallah Ta'ala. And then in the hereafter, unlimited happiness, unlimited joy. And you know, that's why the hadith says, um, and I, I, uh, uh, that uh, the Prophet says, um, Allah Akbar, I forgot the hadith, Mala Aynun Ru'at, Wala Udhunun Samiat, Wala Khatara La Qalbi Bashar, that Allah has made such nemats in Jannah that no eyes have seen, no ears can have heard of, and no heart can comprehend or even begin to understand. So Allah has put uh, restrictions for us in, in many areas. But not because the Allah Ta'ala wants to, it's because that Allah wants to give us a reward in the hereafter, inshaAllah Ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, we can't do this, we can't do that, we, still, we know about it. And the other thing about it is that shaitan, somebody mentioned that why, when we know about it, why do we still celebrate? It's because shaitan and nafs with it is with us all the time. And shait, despite, we know a lot of things, but we still don't do it. And that's because shaitan and nafs will bombard us, bombard us and bombard us. And that's why sitting in with the ulama, learning, going out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sitting with the pious, reading your Qur'an, doing your dhikr, it gives the heart light and nur. And when the light, heart has light and nur, then it will stay away from evil things. We got a call. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Hazrat Mawlana Mahmoud Sahib. Mawlana Khalil, Mawlana, uh, salam to Mawli Raihan also. MashaAllah, I've been looking at this show for quite a while now. Yeah. Very interesting and some exciting topics you are discussing. I keep it up. Jazakallah khairan. By the way, this one honestly was a very good one. It was discussed especially this weekend when we had the guest from South Africa, Mona Ibrahim Bamsa, uh-huh. regarding parents as role models. Uh-huh. And it's something which is very, very important, especially in this day and age. And he even said something to the me, extent that, you know, there was a survey done somewhere and then 86 or 90 percent of the people were of this opinion, the youth, that for us, our true role model are our parents. So parents do need, yeah, it's a very good discussion that, you know, especially in this day and age when everyone's got mobiles and, you know, this family value and to sit down, which is a family, very good discussion. This, this topic should constantly be touched so that everyone's reminded everything. Anything else? No, Jazakallah khair. We appreciate your, appreciate your call, Molana. Um, we said this call, this phone is for teenagers, but I'm really glad that you still think you're a teenager, Molana Mahmoud. 
and you're enjoying the show. <laughs> but your duas, uh, well, our duas, your duas, are, uh, we, it's wonderful that we get all of my ikram coming on and actually giving us duas and, and, and blessing the show. That, that's fantastic, alhamdulillah. Definitely, definitely. And uh, well, it's nice to hear from Maulana Mahmoud. He did um, call um, in the past, Ikra with Ikra, in yeah. the beginning, I remember. And he, he supports so, so much. His support is just so immense. Yeah. And I'm glad that he did. And the fact, inshallah, you know, um, from now, you know, February, March, April, May, June, leading up to Ramadan, inshallah, you know, there are going to be topics that are relevant to our teenagers and are going to be discussed. And Mawlana Khalid is going to work, you know, inshallah, on um, these uh, to uh, topics because the, uh, the aim is, you know, uh, my aim and the vi vision of Generation Y is to get all the teenagers tuning in yeah. when Generation Y is on. And we want you to come out of your shell and don't be embarrassed. Like we say, you don't have to reveal anything if you don't want to. Yeah. But your call may change, it may change uh, I'm the, per I'm the perception of another teenager Absolutely. in whatever it is. So we want to, all of you people, especially the teenagers, because this show is for you guys, dedicated for the youth, and come and share your pro um, problems. And if there's anything that you may wish Mona Khalil or Generation Y to take on yeah. and to discuss, email it. Email it at generationy at ikra.tv. You should understand when you teenagers, when you got a problem, when you got an issue, who are you gonna call? You're gonna call the Y Busters. Right? Yes. That's Generation Y. You're gonna call us, inshallah. Ta'ala. And honestly, we're not here to embarrass you. We're not here to put you down. We're not here to shame you. You know, and if 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 there's such issues where you know they're very, shall we say, delicate issues, then you know what? Don't phone in. Email. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, I might. This, honestly, I'll be quite honest with you. It sometimes it just takes me takes me a few days. Because I have my other jobs to do at the same time, and I, and I understand that that you want an answer, but don't. I, I, I will within a week maximum email you, inshallah. Um, so don't give up. But please, this show is for the youth, and we would, um, this is nothing taken away, nothing from the parents at all. Where you're great, we want your support, but we want you to get your sons and daughters to phone this program. We have a call. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum salam. Your name, please. Um, brother, my name is Sohail from Bradford. Sohail from Bradford. How are you, Sohail? Alhamdulillah, brother. How are you? I'm very well, mashallah. How can we help? Uh, I'm a bit old for the call because you said it's from 13 to 19, but I'm 23 myself. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, well, not ask, like, you know, um, like boys and girls, they like interacting and whatnot, having boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say, like, I, I don't know if you've heard of the thing. Shadi is barbadi, like Shadi is destruction. Okay. And if you can, like, the only solution for boys and girls, obviously, to get together in that way is marriage. Because mm -hmm. um, everyone thinks wedding is bad, it's a dead end. Because um, everybody wants to be together in that sense anyway, but they want to take shortcuts. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll touch on that, inshallah, in just, just a second, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for your call. Shadi is barbadi. <laughs> why is that? I think d d d I have no idea why Shadi is barbadi. Um, it's going to be 18 years for me this, this April, inshallah. Ta the bro brother's main question was? Well, is that people say Shadi is barbadi. Uh -huh. um, but I think you need to let people know that Shadi is not exactly barbadi. Uh -huh. Shadi is the best thing. Shadi is well, the thing that actually makes your iman stronger and makes your iman complete mm. because it says um, uh, uh, nikah is, is half of your iman mm -hmm. and without it you, your iman is not complete mm -hmm. and that's why nearly every Nabi um, uh, uh, got married and encouraged it and Prophet you know, uh, in, in, he could have said a nikah sunnatun the nikah is just a sunnat but he said a nikah min sunnati mm -hmm. it, it, to emphasize that, that nikah is such an important that it's my sunnat and whoever doesn't get married, like, it's like he's turned away from my sunnah. Mm -hmm. right? So that shows the importance. So brothers and sisters, uh, marriage is very, very important. Now, obviously, the, the thing is that before you get married, all the musty before it and all going out, that always looks a lot more rosy and attractive and a lot, a lot more fun. But th that's, that's the way sh that's shaitan and, and that's the way he works. But um, like we said right uh, uh, early in the program, but when you decide, you find somebody, you know the right person, without wasting time, without doing the wrong things, I think it's important 
to make the, the, right, the right approach and mm -hmm. to go about it the right way, talk to your parents and get yourself sorted out. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Gmarhum, mm -hmm. um, Sheikh Kamal Saab used to say, Shadi, Saadi ho, Barbadi na ho. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> and I think if everything is kept, um, you know, in a, a moderate way, and I think people that claim Shadi is a, a Barbadi, is uh, maybe they have experienced, mm. um, you know, problems of, of course, during the Shadi, maybe from a third party, from the in-laws, either mm. side. Otherwise, why would Shadi be Barbadi? It's yeah. the and I think one thing you have to understand, in, in marriage, Marana, you have your good days and you have your bad days. Mm. If you're going to think that by getting married, everything's just going to be absolutely rosy, and you're going to have rose petals on your bed every single day, and your, your house is just going to be fantastic. Well, it's not going to happen like that. You have, but... Even, in, if, even if you look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were days when Nabi Sallam had disagreements with Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, Hazrat Hafsa, Hazrat Safiya, etc, etc. That's part and parcel of life. You know, mm. you can't just throw the towel in and say, you know what, I, I can't take it anymore and, and I'm, I'm going away. It doesn't work like that. You've got you to go for it all the way. Got a few messages, emails coming in. Can you please forward me the dua for the children to pray their salah? I am going to do it at exactly quarter to ten, Mulana. So okay. You're going to have to remind me in ten minutes, inshallah. Another email. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I rang in last time on the show. My name is Yumna, 15 from Doncaster. Just wanted to say the show is great, and every time I saw it coming on, I was al I always a repeat. It was always a repeat, unfortunately. Alhamdulillah, it's live now. Can you please, could you give some tips and discuss to encourage the youth to wake up for Fajr? Jazakallah khair, may Allah Ta'ala grant all us the ability to pray five times a day. Jazakallah. And lastly, um, emailing from Leicester. I don't have something in specific or myself to discuss, but I think an interesting topic of discussion would be girls wearing tight clothes. They should know the sin that they get for wearing such things and how, and how each eye that looks at their body, she gets guna for it, etc. Discuss as, as you please. Allah grant you success, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah khair for that. What was the point before that? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, can you remember? Uh, five more, times a day. Yeah, five times a day. More live shows. More live shows. And they caught me live. Yeah, they caught me live. Yeah, we're live. Don't worry about it. Um, Fajr Salah, I think you, you, obviously you need to set one alarm, if not two alarms. At the moment, it's easy because the mother's at 7, 7, 15. It's the summer times when Fajr is a killer. It's a shame really, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it'd be so nice if uh, Namaz, um, again, it comes down to parents. Mm. It comes down to parents' responsibility. Uh, if the father's going to pray Namaz, the boys are going to pray Namaz. If the mother's going to pray Namaz, the daughter's going to pray Namaz. So the truth of the matter is, you know, if we want our kids to be good, then as parents, we need to set the perfect example for them. When do we set example? Not when they're 15 and not when they're 17, from day one. That doesn't mean they can't play and enjoy themselves. Of course, everything in moderate, moderation. Get Let the them play. out of the way. Get at least the far out of the way. Yeah. It's very, and this, 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 Prophet Sallallahu says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyyati. All of you are responsible and you will be asked about your responsibility on the day of Qiyamah. So parents, we play a big part, then don't knock out, this is the problem, Allah, then we go around knocking our teenagers, you know, our today's teenagers are the worst teenagers. Okay, fine. They, they, they're doing the wrong things. But why are they the worst teenagers, according to stats today, right? It's because we, as parents, don't give them time. Mm. You know, what is there for our youth out in the community? As the Muslim community, what have we given our youth to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where can our boys go? Right? They, want to, they want to chill, right? Why can't we just let them chill in the in, in masjid, in, in, in an area? We, talked, we discussed this last time. Our girls, they feel like the boys get all the freedom in the world. We, there's nowhere for us to go. Why can't we have a, a sort of community center, you know, run in the way it's supposed to be run, and where our girls can come in. You have separate times for boys and girls. Girls can come in. They can enjoy themselves because they feel oppressed all half the time. They can't go to the masjid to pray in the mass. Mm. They can't go out. They feel that... You know, we're getting a raw deal over here. Mm. So we need to help them. We mm. need to help them. It's, it's great criticizing them. You know, saying that you, you're the most disgusting generation of t since time began. Brilliant. But you're not, you're not, you're not um, resolving anything at all. Do something about it. Get, 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 you know, make them, get them involved. I think what you need to do is get them involved. Make them part. Make them feel that you're wanted. 
in don't family, reject them. In don't family throw them away yeah. and say, you know, you're the youth of today, 2014. You can, you're disgusting. And mm. we don't want to, and that's, that's, that's going to take them further and further away from Islam. Amalana, this is the sad stat over here, over here. There was a time where you never heard where a Muslim youth or a Muslim boy or girl used to doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never used to hear that. You never used to hear where people used to think that, you know what, um, I'm going to go away from Islam. You are hearing stories now where boys and girls think, you know what, is this, if this is what Islam is, I ain't got time for it. Mm. If this is what Allah is, I haven't got time for it. Right? And again, where does that come from? Okay, you can blame the media, you can blame this, you can blame that, you can blame social network. But hold on, let's stand in front of the mirror ourselves as parents and think, what have I done for my son and daughter? Mm -hmm. how, how have I helped them? Do I give them the time? Do I give them, uh, do I sit with them or not? I think well, we've, got, we've got to look at ourselves. Instead of, it's easy just to blame our kids, the youth. And that's why respected young says, boys and girls, I want to be, I want to be, inshallah ta'ala, agani uncle, right? Uh, agani molana, who can help you out, inshallah ta'ala. And honestly, from my heart, inshallah, um, as I've been imam for many, many years, and Maulana Rehan and Maulana Qasim got me to come here in Generation Y, and I thank them for that. But I just don't want to turn up and just do anything random. I want to work hard. I want to build connection with yourselves. I want you to build your connection with myself as well. And we want to become one team, and we want to show people, youth, middle age, no matter who we are, you can be the most important people, you youngsters out there, don't matter what, where you live, no matter what you do, no matter how many gunas we've done, realize you are special in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are just amazing. And the reward for you in, on the day of Qiyamah is absolutely fantastic. It doesn't mean just because we've done a few gunas that we're, we're horrible. Allah will forgive everything. Think, plan, and think that you can be the future of tomorrow. Today's youth, boys and girls, you can be the future of tomorrow. You can be the Muhammad bin Qasim. And you can be the Tariq of Tariq bin Ziyad, you can be the Hazrat Aisha of the, of, the, of the future if you want to be. So don't think as the youth that you're worthless and you, you can't do nothing. You have a lot of talent, Allah has given it to you. And be proud to be the youth of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Going back to the tight clothing, I think that, it, 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 we're gonna, I think that requires a whole topic to be honest, a whole day where we can discuss that, mm -hmm. insha'Allah. Another one, um, Salam Zmanana. And there's a new application called uh, Never Miss Fajr. Yes, I've heard of that one. Yeah, I've heard of that as well. Which prays Adhan and needs you to answer some Islam related questions. <laughs> I'm not downloading that then. I've got it. You got it? I've got it. Okay, yeah. you need to show me that. Yeah. Right. And last, another email, mashallah. I try my best to read my namaz, but I can't do it at school as timings are in between lessons. Oops, I read my namaz at home, but I can't at school. What is your advice on this? I am 13 years old, but I don't want to say my name. I live in Sheffield. Fantastic. There's not much you can do if you're in school. Um, they're, they're kind enough that they give us Zohar time in our break time. But other than that, you'd have to read it after school. I think you can't say I'm a Muslim boy or a girl and, then you, I, and demand a room. I don't think it works like that. But I think... Um, I mean, at schools, uh, Maulana, you know, looking at yeah. the timings. Yeah. Okay. Um, a Zohar you know, quite easily um, during, um, as soon as the beginning time uh, kicks in, yeah. during winter, yeah. you can quite easily pray it. At school, just do the fard. Yeah. It'll take you four minutes, yeah. you know? And during summer, you, you can even pray when you get home. It doesn't matter. I think what's, um, the question is for the winter time. During the winter time, what does one do? You know, you know if you want to pray it, no one can stop you. Even if it's at a school, yeah. you know, um, you just got to time yourself. Beginning time of as um, Asr, um, a prayer Dhuhr. And before you go home, um, somewhere you will get time to pray Asr. Mm. And then Maghrib you pray at home. It can be done. It can be done. I know be... students who are doing it. Yeah. And summer is not an issue at all. Summer is not an it's issue. Not, it's just winter time, but it's tight. Dhuhr starts uh, uh, just after um, about, half, about half 11. Yeah. Uh, just after half 11. During the lunch break, a door can be um, performed mm. quite easily and Asr can be performed straight after school. Maghrib, you pray at home. It's simple. Yeah. It can be done. Another uh, message is, Salams, I know that you are not discussing drugs, but I think that when you really do your Salah and read the Quran with understanding, then it becomes like a drug and you can become addicted and really enjoy practicing Islam. 
That's, that's a good point because the, the other problem is Mawlana, we, when we pray our salah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, we don't know what it means. Okay, we're fortunate we went to Madrasa and we learned what it means. The general public have no idea, so they're just thinking the Imam's going on on, on his reading. And so how do they benefit? Now, this, this is funny, this is before this, I read, I read this text message out. I'm thinking from the 1st of March as an Imam, because I'm going to Albania, Kosovo next week, that's why I'm, I'm thinking of starting it from the 1st of March is every day after Isha, I'm going to turn around after Fard Salah and say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, this is the meaning of it. Next day, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So within a week, the congregation will know the meaning of Surah Fatiha. Yeah. So I think this is just a tip. I'm thinking of starting myself and maybe other imams can, maybe if they find, if think it's a good idea, maybe they can start or they can use a different method for that. Um, but, but if, because not everybody has time mm -hmm. to actually take time out to le learn and study the Quran. But if the Imam, it's maybe I'm wrong in that. No, 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 you're absolutely right, right in that. Right. Um, it, it, it's, it's very, very si simple. Yeah. And the time that I tell people to study, okay, if you think about it, it can be done. Okay, if the father's not at home, the mother sits with um, her children, right, starts, like I said earlier in the, in the program, and my Ikra with Ikra viewers know because I say it day in, day out. Wednesday tomorrow, mm. I do Juz Amma and Tarjuma. Yeah, I do that. Juz Amma okay. Tarjuma. We've reached now. This is the fourth year now. Fantastic. I'm uh, <coughs> doing it. The Tarjuma, the gist of the su Surah, and 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 what I say to them, it's like Takrar. You know, we just do Takrar from six to eight every night. You do Takrar, and the best time to do Takrar is when if the children go to bed at eight o'clock, seven thirty, make them do Wudu. Sit down, take one verse, yeah, and, and read. And I think uh, the reason I thought about it, we uh, we got a call. We'll take the call in a second. But we, the most, the surahs we did most in the month are the last last ten surahs from Surah Feel till Qulat Rabbin Nas. So as an Imam, I'm thinking if I do one surah a week or one surah every two weeks, within six months maximum, the congregation will know what it means. So the next time they read Surah to Feel, Alam Tara Kaifa Fa'ala Rabbuka Bishabil Feel, they'll actually enjoy. You know what? I actually know what that means, mm. right? And the same way, if we as parents can take time out and teach our kids one one ayah, one one verse of the Qur'an, it'll make a massive difference. And then, when they set up to read the mass, they'll know what it is. Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Ala, Allahu Akbar, at tahiyyat Durud Sharif, Dubai Qunut, it'll make a massive difference. It will, and as long as they know the gist of the surah or the yeah. chapter, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. For the public, that is enough. Yeah. If Absolutely. they know what's in Surah Al-Nas, yeah. what's in Surah Al-Falaq, what's in Ikhlaqs, what's in Surah Al-Masad, and so forth. Brilliant. We'll take this call and then the dua to make your kids, Baba of Salah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Mm, sorry, could you, I, I missed you. Could you say that again, please? This is Valbona from Kosovo. From Kosovo. Oh, you're Valbona from Kosovo. How are you? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I didn't. I, <laughs> I didn't hear you, Valbona. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well, Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, just one minute, Valbona, this is one of our teachers okay. in Mashallah. Kosovo. She's one of our teachers and she's, uh, her and her husband are in charge of all the madrasas there. How is uh, Driton? He's sleeping? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, watching Okay, you. so, so Valbona, in, in, in Kosovo, yeah. Valentine's is, is big in Kosovo or small or how is it? In fact, uh, before the war, mm -hmm. we didn't know about Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. but uh, now, have become a lot of celebrations like Valentine's mm. Day, yeah. uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving Day, etc. And I think this is a big problem now. Yeah, it's, it's a big problem everywhere. I mean, and do, do the Imams in Kosovo, do they address it? Do they speak about it in the khutbah? Yeah, yeah. They do, yeah. huh? People listen, don't listen. Some people do, some people don't. How does it work? Um, some, yes, yeah, some, no. Okay, so do you and Driton celebrate Valentine's? No. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I'm very happy that you called us uh, Valbona. Remember, it, as in your duas, my salams to Driton. Inshallah. And inshallah, I will see you on Saturday in, in, in Kosovo, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, just. Walaikum as Walaikum as salam. The last five minutes. And uh, the emails, this is, Malana, this is emails made my day. That's it's good. coming up. We would like you to come to Slough and give a talk to the young generation about Islam. Can, we, can that be arranged? That's a breakthrough. You do it, man. Right? Yeah, inshallah ta'ala. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I shall email you back, inshallah, then maybe we can arrange a program in Slough, inshallah ta'ala, where we can rock and roll. Not rock and roll, we can really, you know,
get we, people we in can Chelsea. really generation Y. Yeah, generation Y. Yeah, and if there's any other cities in the UK, then we'll send Imam Qasim down. Yeah, if it's too far. <laughs> Another message. Assalamu alaikum, Mulana. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I have a question. What Islam says about short back and sides, hair cut, and is this permissible in Islam? Jazakallah khair. We will discuss this inshallah when we talk about clothing inshallah. When we talk about clothing, we'll talk about the haircut in, in, full, in full details inshallah. Ta'ala. But I, I've got, I'll save all these emails and if I don't mention it, you're more than welcome to email me. Business emails will come to me on my phone as well inshallah. Ta'ala. But regarding the visit to Slough, yeah, please do email me back in a couple of days I mean, if I don't get back to you. And then we can arrange a program where we can come to Slough, we can make an arrangement, we can get the youth together. And that'd be a great start. We it will it be. The Generation Y. Yeah. Last two minutes, wow. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Simple as that. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Now, I was supposed to talk about the four fathers today of wudu. And I, you know, the time's flown by. And I, I, unfortunately, I haven't got time. It's only 10 to 10. They're supposed to be to 10 o'clock. These guys are taking me out quick, man. I need to talk to the, the <laughs> producer. Right? Um, but what on uh, today's show? How, how, how do you think it went? Now, t today's show, I mean, this is our fourth live show. And I, you know, it, it's great, it's mm -hmm. good. The fact that, you know, I think you make the biggest sacrifice in a sense, traveling all the way from Leicester. And, you know, you bring um, Tutalawai along with you. Um, you bring along Najirbai uh, and also um, Gmotibai. Yeah. And so all of you guys come, it's a huge sacrifice. Mm. And you know, it takes, you know, two and a half hours to get here, two and a half hours back. That's like to, as five hours yeah. of your um, a Tuesday every fortnight. Good thing you don't know what they do in the back of the car, Mr. Tutla and Mr. Nazir, but we won't go into that yeah, anyway. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's seven yeah. hours yeah. you've uh, taken out. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely um, make this show a very, very good one for um, the teens because of the sacrifice that you are making. Today's show has been great, as always, as the last three live yeah. shows. But moving on, inshallah, from March, you know, I want to tell uh, the teenagers out there, we are going to have topics. You know, you will see um, we, it's going to be educational as well. Yeah. We will have materials for you to show on the screen. Yeah. And do remember, irrelevant of the topics, if you have any, um, if you want any counselling, by mm. all means, you can interrupt the topic and you can throw yep. those um, questions in either by email or you can call um, directly. Right, I've got a couple of emails in quickly. One's about birthday parties. This is, I've been celebrating it and somebody said it's haram. I don't believe it's haram. Could you explain that? I'll email you inshallah and explain it. And last email, salams. It's Uzair Sacha. Please embrace us with your kind presence in Jewsbury. Jazakallah. So I've got invitation to Jewsbury and Slough. So I feel absolutely chuffed. I probably look more bigger on my chair than I usually do. But on a serious note, I'd like to first of all, I'd say a big jazakallah khair to you for your sacrifice. Your eyes are closing. Inshallah, we're going to send you first class to home now, inshallah, so you can rest yes. and your family can get to see you as well, inshallah. I'd like to say a big jazakallah khair to Mr. Moti, Nazir Bay, and Idris Bay for coming, um, or Imam Qasim for giving the opportunity. And a big, the biggest thank you for all the people who emailed me, who called in, who've been watching the program. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm trying to come back again this month, inshallah, ta'ala. Permission, um, it, it all depends on how things turn out at home. We talk about spending time with the family. So we'll talk about that, inshallah, ta'ala. But to all the audience, in March, inshallah, ta'ala, I'll be on my own. I'll be bringing my own guest from Leicester. In between, we'll have Molana Rayhan as well, inshallah, ta'ala. But jazakallah so, so much for your support. It's been a fantastic program. It's been a fantastic evening. Enjoyed your company. And more important, I've told my, my colleague Mullah Rehan, so without him, this would have never ever been possible. So Allah Ta'ala reward him abundantly Ameen. in this world, in the hereafter. Ameen. And Jazakallah khair to all of you. Remember in your duas, take care until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.